Patrick, you're a neuropsychologist. I was trained in neurophysiology. Uh, we do our work that is very specific. You work on free will. But when you step back and think about the nature of consciousness and from the work that you've done, uh, what, what reflections do you have? Well, I think that consciousness is a consequence of brain activity. So the brain consists of billions and billions of neurons, each of which is a, a living cell, which is uh, capable of generating an electrical impulse and lots of synapse to other neurons. Sure. And in some cases, assemblies of these neurons can produce a conscious feeling. Now, not all brain activity produces consciousness, but some brain activity does produce consciousness. And I think consciousness is it's, it's great to have it. It's a wonderful uh, and possibly even transcendental thing from the first person perspective. But it's also the product of that very complex and very fantastic machine that, that is the human brain. So, so let's ask the first question is how do you differentiate in the brain those processes that are unconscious from conscious that they're, they're both electrical firings of circuits and neurons and they look the same. Right. So some of the neural circuits in some areas of the brain seem to be particularly likely to cause consciousness. And we can think about the, the cerebral hemispheres, the neocortex, which is the, the big bit <laughs> as being more intimately concerned with our feelings, our sensations, our perceptions, and our thoughts than lower brain areas, the brain stem and the midbrain. So there's something about the cortical circuit with its layered structure and its complicated neuro, uh, interconnections between neurons, which seems to make it well suited for producing consciousness. There's an interesting difference I'd like to uh, highlight between, if you like, two different kinds of consciousness. So on the one hand, you have sensations and perceptions. So this would be you know, the, the taste of the strawberry and the, um, the sound of Mozart. And those percepts seem to be associated with activity in the primary sensory areas of the brain. So you have the primary visual cortex at the back, the primary sensory cortex, which deals with sensations of the body here on this lateral surface of the uh, cerebral hemispheres. And when those areas are activated, then you have the corresponding conscious feeling. So in fact, if you stimulate the brain artificially from outside using electromagnets, you, over the visual parts of the brain, you can make people see flashes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So that's consistent with the idea that making those neurons in that visual part of the brain fire is what produces conscious experience. Second kind, is perhaps better described as thoughts, so conscious thoughts. And they seem to depend on long-range interactions between multiple brain areas over really quite big integrative um, networks, so one part of the brain working with another. Describe for me three different aspects of this brain-mental uh, relationship. One is simple correlation. Second is causation, even though it's correlated, there is cause there. And the third is identity, that it is exactly the same thing, that you just have two names for it, like Venus being the morning star and the evening star, two different names, it's the same thing exactly. Okay, so it's a good question, and I'm only going to answer the first two parts, because the third part's a philosophical question. The third part is a question about what do we mean by uh, consciousness, what's the, what's the semantics? The first two questions are scientific. Is it correlation or causation between brain activity and conscious experience? And I think the really important point here is that some of our scientific methods are causational and not correlative. Let's make a distinction between um, a method like uh, fMRI brain imaging, where we might uh, ask a participant to lie in the brain scanner and show them some visual stimuli, and they'll find that we get activation of the visual parts of the brain at the, at the back in the occipital lobe. Now, that's just really noticing a correlation between the fact that we showed them some visual stimuli and the fact that these areas of the brain light up. So that's just showing a correlation between uh, the visual experience that they have and activity in those parts of the brain. But in some cases, we can actually intervene in the brain. So animal experimentation is a very important uh, method of intervening in the brain, but we can't work out much about consciousness in animals because sure. we can't ask them, or if we do ask them, they're not going to reply. Right? Yeah. So 
there are a few ways in which we can intervene in the human brain. One of them is a, a, a very important technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. So it basically consists of making neurons in the superficial layers of the cortex fire by exposing them to a brief but strong magnetic field. Now, over some areas of the brain, not all, you can produce a conscious experience by artificially activating the brain using TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So if you stimulate over the uh, visual cortex, you can make people see flashes. And as you move the coil around the different bits of mm. the visual cortex, mm. they'll see a flash in different parts of their visual mm. field. Mm. If you hold the coil over the bits of the brain that process the movement of visual stimuli, they'll see a flash that whips across their visual field like a lightning bolt. I think that's a really beautiful demonstration that making neurons fire, in this case artificially, causes conscious experience. I think that's the evidence for causation. Mm -hmm. and, and why can't you then go to identity between the firing of those neurons and the experience, the so-called qualia, the, the knowing what it feels like, the first person subjective feeling of that lightning bolt across the field? Well, I have no personal problem with an identity theory. It's a philosophical argument, and I think the philosophers will have uh, will have a lot of interesting debates to try to force me into a corner. That's their job. <laughs> they, they, they do thought experiments. I have no difficulty with it. The interesting feature about the identity theory is that you're then saying there's an identity between a necessarily first-person experience and a clearly objective set of neurophysiological mm. events. And that really means, I think, saying... Well, maybe the first person perspective isn't actually that important uh, in the end because the biological machine can generate it. Maybe that's quite a useful and uh, humble thing to admit. And that's your view. I have no problem with the idea that consciousness simply is the activity of particular brain circuits.